And joining us in studio is expert in international relations with the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, Dr. Emmanuel Navon. Doctor, a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Now, we're hearing reports now that Hamas in the Gaza Strip and Fatah of the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank are vowing to unite over Israel's plans to expand over Judea and Samaria. What could this mean on the ground practically? We've heard those rumors hundreds of times in the past 20 years. So it's really not the first time that uh, Hamas and Fatah uh, talk about uniting uh, against Israel. Now, mind you, uh, definitely they are united in the hatred of Israel, but generally uh, the union doesn't, doesn't last very long because they also hate each other, mm -hmm. they fight each other, they, are, uh, they, they really are rivals of a power. And we all remember when Hamas took over the Gaza Strip in 2007, how he dealt with the Fatah uh, officials. So it really is not the first time that we hear this, uh, this uh, union between the two parties, and it won't last the same way that it never lasted before. All right, now s several settlement heads are comparing Netanyahu with Menachem Begin, uh, saying that you know Netanyahu is just talking the talk without walking, whereas Menachem Begin actually went ahead and in a matter of a day you know, pushed for the annex of the Golan Heights. Uh, you know, what, what makes this situation different? Well, it was different, first of all, before and after the elections. You'll, you'll notice that Netanyahu spoke a lot about annexation ahead of the elections in March, but we're now after the elections. And as you know, uh, politicians tend to be different before and after elections. The truth of the matter is that uh, Netanyahu himself, uh, over the years, and don't forget he's been altogether prime minister for 14 years, had many opportunities to try and push for some kind of at least partial annexation. And indeed, there was some pressure on him uh, to do so. And he, his answer over the years was, why do I need this headache? We're building on the ground anyways. Why do I need to attract the attention of the international community? I don't think his mind has changed on that. It's just that with the announcement of the Trump plan, uh, he wanted to get some kind of advantage before the elections. But now we see immediately when he said, OK, we're going to annex immediately, uh, Jared Kushner immediately said, no way. And now even the Trump administration, they had this meeting a week ago. They're not sure if they want to give a green light to Israel or not. And then he has the opposition on the right from the, uh, the Council of the Settlements and then from his own government. So it doesn't look good for him in order to move ahead. It, there's too much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry to quote myself, but I've said for, for the past months that nothing will happen on July 1st, and uh, I was correct. Right. Well, we've also been hearing a lot of speculation as to what was behind the delay. There has been the pointing to uh, the fact that perhaps the Trump administration is trying to play it safe ahead of, you know, perhaps dwindling numbers in the polls ahead of the November election. Also not enough international buy-in. But when has international buy-in or lack thereof, ever stopped Israel or ever played into Israel's decision making? That's right. But the question is, what would be the advantage for Israel at this point? Uh, in other words, when Israel annexed, and you mentioned before Menachem Begin, when he annexed the Golan Heights in 1981, 1982, of course, nobody recognized it. Uh, but, uh, you know, even the United States condemned it at the time. The question is today, if you compare the, the benefits and the disadvantages of such a decision, that's really what has to be taken into account by Israel. Now, you have to understand also that as far as the Trump administration is concerned, at least Jared Kirshner, the main purpose of that plan really is to strengthen the ties with the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia. Nobody actually believes that there's going to be peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the, uh, the plan talks about it, but it's not the actual purpose of the plan. And that's what we have to understand. What Jared is really trying to achieve is really to strengthen this axis of Israel and the Sunni states against Iran. So then how, how then, just very briefly, is Netanyahu then going to get what he's looking for for his country across the line then, trying to piggyback off the United States agenda. But again, Netanyahu today does not need annexation anymore because we're after elections. Mm -hmm. He has his mm -hmm. government, a shaky one indeed, but he doesn't need annexation anymore because we're past elections. So I think that really at this point Netanyahu is going to wait. Also, everybody wants to know what's going to happen in November. Mm -hmm. uh, Netanyahu is a very cautious person right. and he's very good at blaming, uh, blaming others and there's a long list of people he can, claim, he can blame for not moving ahead with this annexation which, again, I don't think will happen. All right, Dr. Emmanuel Levon, thank you for that insight. Thank you. Thank you so much.